So now we're going to take a look at the normal distribution curve inside of Excel. Excel gives us two really neat functions to handle the standard normal distribution curve. Uh, give us the probability or give us the actual x value for that curve. Uh, the first one is the norm.sinv. It basically takes the probability and will return what the x value is. So if this was our normal distribution curve, our standard normal distribution curve with a mean of 0, standard deviation of 1, um, we would see basically here that the uh, probability 0.03, so the area under the curve, 0.03, is going to be equivalent to a negative 1.88. And if we have 0.25 as our probability, so 25% of the curve, uh, the x value would be at negative 0.067. So as we take a look at this, we see that for this one, when we use the norm.sinv of A5, which is the probability of 0.03, that would basically give us something around here, 1.88 or so, probably a little bit more to the right. And this would represent approximately 3% of the curve. Uh, from here to the left. When we do the next one, we're looking at 0.25, it would basically be here. Approximately 25% of the curve would land on this side, and this would be at around negative 0.67. Uh, if we were looking for 40% of the curve, it would be a little bit higher along the curve here, somewhere around negative 0.25. Negative now, it should be obvious here that if this is our uh, mean here at zero, that 50% is to the left and 50% is to the right. And that's what we see here by the norm.s inverse of A8, which is the probability there. And that gives us our uh, point right at the top of the bell curve. Moving to the right, if we look at 0.65, we get somewhere around 0.39 here on the uh, x-axis. And if we were looking for 75% of the curve, we are somewhere around 0.67 or so, which would give us everything to the left uh, of, of this. So 75% of the curve would fall from here all the way to the left. And we finish off the curve by doing 0 0.90 and 0.95. So 95% of the curve lies on this side. Now again, if we're going to be looking for uh, what the actual area of the curve is for a given x value, uh, we basically do the same thing. We give our x values here and the norm dist function is basically going to give us uh, what the area of the curve is from the left tail. So we're going to put in uh, a16, which is our value for x. The mean is 0, standard deviation 1. So we could do this for any curve where we're given a mean and a standard deviation. And we set cumulative equal to 1 so that we can get the cumulative part of the left tail, not just the point on the curve that it's at. So when we do this, we get our 0.001. So 1% of the curve is basically given by this negative 3 uh, and less. Now what we do is at that point, uh, and that's represented by this point, but what we do at that point is we will take 1 minus that and say that 0.99 or 99% of the curve lies to the right of this. So we can easily get the left tail or the right tail for any given one of the probabilities. So here, this is our normal distribution, as we said. And then what we'll just do is we'll do 1 minus to get the right tail. Moving down, we'll basically use each one of the x values. 2.5 represents 6% of the curve, which would be somewhere around here. Uh, the next one would be negative 2, which is about 2% of the curve, which would move it to about here. Um, about 6% of the curve is represented at this point, And then 15% of the curve by about this point. Uh, again, going looking at 0 as our 50% uh, mark, we can see that at 0, it does represent 50% on each side. As we move over to the right side, we end up with 69% of the curve here in total at around 1 half. At round 1, we end up with 84% of the curve represented by this. And again, at each level, we're subtracting, we're doing 1 minus so that we can see what the right tail is, all the way up to around uh, 99%, which is basically where x is equal to 3. So 99% of the curve is to the left, 1% of the curve is to the right.